Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining and welcome back to Wall Street Silver. Joining us today is our good friend, Rafi Farber from the Endgame Investor. Rafi, it's great to see you again. It is truly great to see you too. It always perks up my spirits when I see your two faces. Uh, yeah, it's good to see you. So Rafi, I know I know you're all you know passionate about what's going on in the world today, um, mm -hmm. specifically what the Fed's doing. You were telling me the Fed's doing something weird with Wall Street bankers right now. Tell us the story right now and, and, and how weird this is. Oh, what's the what's the Fed doing with Wall Street bankers? <laughs> I saw out of the New York Times that they're they're canvassing Wall Street bankers to ask them their opinion on whether they think uh, th there could be a Treasury meltdown akin to what happened in the UK at the end of uh, September, when I think gilts the the yields on gilts went up like I don't know fifty or hundred basis points or so. <laughs> Doesn't even matter what the number is. They started like collapsing because there was forced selling going on, and then and then the the bank being had to come in and and do its final pivot. Um, it, it, could that happen in treasuries? And uh, the fact the fact that they're asking Wall Street bankers this is ridiculous because essentially the question that they're asking is, uh, you know, they're asking, do you think the treasury market could collapse, which you could translate as, do you think we should buy more treasuries, which in other words, you could say, do you think we should print more money to buy more treasuries? And what do you expect Wall Street bankers to say? No, 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 no. Don't don't. We have enough money. Don't give us any more money. We have we're fine. Just you know, it's fine. It's not going to crash. Everything's going to be fine. Of course, they said, yeah, it could happen. But yeah. technically, yes, it, it's not mm -hmm. not only that it could happen. Yeah, of course, it's going to happen. We, nobody knows the exact way it's going to happen. But when you put markets on, you know, fentanyl, they're going to get constipated and very happy. And uh, that's a, a bad combination of uh, side effects that, uh, you know, addicts all know what that's like. And so does the bond market. There's a revolving door between Wall Street and the Fed and Wall Street and the U.S. Treasury. You know, all those guys who are working in government, they, they go back and forth to their investment banks or their hedge funds, and then they take their next turn in government. Um, and I almost think when they do this, they're basically telling Wall Street, you know, when they canvass them to ask their opinion, they're basically telling their buddies, you know, start, <clears throat> posi start positioning yourself for this, right? It's sort of an informal discussion, but they're sort of hinting at what direction the Fed's going to go uh, and telling their buddies how to start positioning themselves for the next big macro move. Uh, isn't that sort of how the game's played? Yeah, well, look, there, fundamentally, this was never a game of Republicans versus Democrats or any political party versus any other political party. We've known that for many, many years. Um, we have, but like only now, and it's, it's hard for us to get into the perspective of a mainstream guy sort of waking up now. You know, I woke up in 2012 when I found Ron Paul and, and I started listening to his campaign. And that was that was 10 years ago now. But now, now there's a lot more people in the streets that are waking up to what is going on in some very basic way. And we have to figure out a way to communicate them and say, OK, look, I, you know, it, it's very scary right now that you understand that this is all against you. But we've been here for 10 years and, and it's OK. Come with us and we'll tell you what to do. That's that's the communication we have to make, because a lot of these these people are just like coming out of their sleep now. It's like the Matrix is waking up. But the people that are waking up, they don't they don't understand exactly what they're seeing. They just know that it's wrong. Mm -hmm. um, right. And then we come at them with all this information that we've been that we've known for 10 years and start screaming at them and they like get freaked out. and They, they, they don't know what to do. So it's it's the, it's the state against the people. And and the and the political parties are, are allied up. It's the same in this country, in Israel. It's the same in the United States. It's the same in Canada. It's it's, it's everywhere, and uh, the 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 people of the world have to unite. And I and I like I legitimately I really see the the gold and silver community as the leaders of that community, at least uh, the you know the monetary leaders. Um, mm -hmm. In in the same sense that sort of like the Fed is the monetary leader of the government, and but you know people want to say that it's separate. But like, who's who's the real power in the government? The real power in the government is the Fed. Even if you could say the Fed is technically somewhat independent, whatever, that's all nonsense. Um, so the the gold and silver guys, uh, and and especially the silver guys, because silver is the public's money. We are the we are the monetary leaders of the freedom movement. You know, that's that's where we should be, mm -hmm. even though we're not on the the front pages of it, because you know that's that's reserved for like 
let's say Rand Paul and Ron DeSantis and maybe Donald Trump and these people that don't quite understand what's going on, but they have a good sense of things. They have nice souls and, and we can ally with them. Um, but we, we are the guy, we are the guys that are going to, uh, deal with the monetary system, which is the, the core of the power of the government. So, um, that that's where we are and that's yeah. what we have to accept. You know, what's going on right now in the world is, um, the U.S. dollar, DXY, you know, it's I, I don't I hate to say use the term that the dollar is strong because the dollar is, you know, our buying power for people who live in the U.S. dollar in the United States. It's getting weaker. But relative to other currencies, the DXY is tracking. The dollar is getting stronger proportionally. And the biggest moves lately have been in the Japanese yen. And so the, the Japanese government, which their debt to GDP is beyond 200%, way beyond ours, and their rates are still, what, at 0% or a quarter of a percent or something like that. And they're sort of coming to the end of what's possible with MMT, you know, this, uh, this theory that you can just print forever and there's no negative consequences. Uh, their currency is basically falling apart. It's taking more and more yen to buy $1. That's what this chart is showing and this is going back you know seven years here you can see the yen blowing out so what's your take on this you know is there does this end are we are we reaching a limit to how strong the dollar can get relative to other currencies yeah it it does end um it i guess the answer i don't have a number for you on where the the dixie is going to hit when it starts reversing i don't know what that number is going to be um, but I do know that it's going to reverse when the um, when the treasury market starts breaking down and the Fed has to to, to print more money. That's that's when it's going to reverse. Exactly where yeah. it's going to be when that happens, I don't know. Um, but Japan is is very special for for three reasons. First is um, for Keynesian reasons because it is it is the pinnacle of the Keynesian experiment. The the amount of of debt that they have taken on, I think is like 250, 260% of GDP, which is itself is a made up Keynesian number. Uh, <laughs> and for the, the second reason is that it, it holds the most amount of treasuries of any foreign country, even more than China. China's mm -hmm. less than a trillion. I think the last numbers I saw was Japan was 1.2 trillion or something like that. And the third reason is, is political, that uh, really the Bretton Woods system was founded in 1946. Uh, the po the the post uh, you know the system that fell apart that led to um, the the total fiat system, and that really that was that really developed itself based on a a post World War II alliance between Japan and the United States, a financial alliance which continues to this day. And, you know that's that's what's going to happen when you nuke a country twice and you, you you kill like you know hundreds of thousands of people in its country. They'll be your for as long as you know, <laughs> for as long as you want them to. And that's what's been happening. And it's sad, but true. And, um, and the unraveling of this system, that it would come from Japan, would both be historically poetic, and it would make some sense if history, you right. know, uh, Intertwined. makes some kind of rhythm like that, it should it should unravel like this in some way from Japan, because they've taken Keynesianism to the max. Uh, so once the once the the yen, my 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 thinking is once the yen really starts to collapse, and Japan, the Bank of Japan has no choice but to sell its treasury bunch right. to save its currency to save its people, then that's when you could see the treasury market start seizing up, and then the Fed printing on the other side, and then just everything just unraveling very quickly. And at the end of the day, then the reason we care about the dollar and, and its relation to other currencies is that has an impact on gold and silver prices. And one of the things we've noticed recently is that silver premiums on physical silver, ignore the spot price, the spot price is fake. Um, <laughs> physical, physical silver, the premiums over spot are just through the roof. Um, what, and I know you track this really closely. What are you watching right now in regards to physical silver premiums? Uh, I, I look mostly at uh, at junk silver mm -hmm. um, because it it takes away the um, let's say the artificial problems with let's say with like um, silver eagles which might have supply problems because the mint is lazy or you know maybe the guys at the head of the machines are drunk or something probably or whatever it is 
Um, so I think junk silver premiums from pre-1964 coins are something like 45, 50%. It's never, ever been that high. Not, in, not even in, you know, 2008 financial crisis. I think it was 40% at that, at that point. Mm -hmm. And then I heard from guys like, um, like Andy Schechtman that, that it, in many cases, it's even higher. It's like 60 or 70%. So the way I look at this is not, it's not like there's two ways to look at it, you know? One is that, oh my gosh, silver is so expensive and, you know, I can't afford it. So I'll just buy the SLV because it's so much cheaper. Um, that's, that's not how I, that's not how I would look at it. It's not how you should look at it. These premiums, because, because who's buying these coins? The people that are buying these coins are the silverbacks. Mm -hmm. they're, they're buying, they're buying, that's, that's our credo. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And the fact that prices are so high and still, the, the supplies in the COMEX are going lower and lower and lower means that these prices, these premiums are being met and these sales are being made, which means, which means that the silverbacks are bidding the silver away from everyone else because they're willing to pay the highest price. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that's, that, that is what it means. It means we're winning the bidding war. Mm -hmm. And you now we're seeing the, the supplies go down in COMEX. We're seeing the supplies go down in LBMA. We're seeing supplies of all transparent silver going down all over the place. And transparent silver means um, all, all paper funds, whether they're in, um, let's say, the Perth Mint or gold money or somewhere in Switzerland where somebody uh, pays to, to store silver somewhere and gets a certificate or a digital or whatever. And that's all counted. And all that supply is going down. Uh, that means people are selling out of their, their accounts and that silver has to go somewhere. It's going into the physical markets because that's where the premiums are. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you said that that dollars are dollars are rising against all currencies. Yeah, they are. They are rising against all currencies because most companies have dollar debt and they need to pay that debt or they will go bankrupt. So they're they mm -hmm. will pay a premium for those dollars just to stay solvent. But don't forget that gold and silver are also currencies and they will also go down against the dollar. When when there's a rush for dollars, and that will end when when somebody cannot make that rush to dollars, and they go bankrupt, and that causes the next bankruptcy, and that causes the next bankruptcy, and then the Fed is called. Somebody calls Jerome Powell and says, "You got to print," <laughs> and he prints, and then everything just goes the opposite direction. Yep. And do you think the it, it's going to take some sort of bankruptcy, some sort of uh, uh, institutional failure, some major hedge fund to fail? before that that moment happens i mean that's what happened with um you know that's what triggered it was bear stearns and later lehman brothers was obviously the trigger in 2008 before they turned on the the huge tarp bailouts is that the moment that we're going to need to that's going to cause the fed to actually shift course yeah well there are so many potential weakest links and really nobody knows exactly what the absolute weakest link is for many for many months, I thought that it was going to be a European bank, maybe Credit Suisse, maybe Deutsche mm -hmm. Bank, um, which would also be historically poetic because Deutsche Bank is the reincarnation of Credit Anstalt, which is what, the bank that collapsed in 1931, which led the led on to the Great Depression uh, as a global event, not just in the U.S. Uh, so it could be a European bank, it could be some obscure thing. Um, I was thinking maybe it could be you know the the single. Um, gift shop in Antarctica that sells knitted penguins that <laughs> bought a single treasury in 1987 and that, you know, sells it. And then all of a sudden everything collapses because, you know, now Antarctica doesn't own any treasuries. It, it could literally be anything. And, and the, but the thing is, it, it doesn't really matter what exactly it's going to be. We just have to be, have to, have to recognize the, the, the pyramid in which we are, you know, right. there's no, there's no single brick that, that is pointed out that caused the collapse of the Tower of Babel. It just collapsed. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, Jenga, nobody remembers the Jenga, the, the exact Jenga square that you take out that caused the collapse of the tower. It just does. And mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to, to learn about it after it happens, but nobody, nobody can know mm -hmm. what it's going to be before it does. Yeah, that's a good point. And the same, and the same point, uh, when liquidity dries up, often a lot of the scams fall apart. You know, Bernie Madoff came to light only when, uh, the liquidity dried up in 2008, right? That's what, so it's going to, I think there's all sorts of scams like that that are probably right. in the process of blowing up right now uh, with the tighter money, uh, with the increase of rates. Someone's on the wrong side of a lot of these trades. Um, someone's mm -hmm. getting screwed on some credit default swap somewhere because these things are traded like gambling. 
uh, it's like a casino, uh, the way these <laughs> things are, are traded and handled. And um, each time the, the Fed's probably going to raise another 75 basis points at the next meeting and maybe another 50 or 75 in December. And the question really is becoming what's breaking out there because something's breaking under the hood. Uh, not everyone can be making money with such dramatic changes in interest rates that are happening so quickly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you, if you're going to raise interest rates, you know, 75 basis points, and then the basis for all prices in the planet, which are basically U S treasuries, because that's what it means to be a benchmark. Like you look what the price of U S treasuries are, and then you price everything else on the planet. Um, and then eventually it eats, it eats out into the, com into the consumer sector indirectly. Um, so <laughs> So yeah, if the, if the base of all prices is manipulated, then all prices are manipulated. And where what happened in um in two thousand eight in Iceland, I think I think the price level just like skipped up over a few days to uh, up fifty percent with everything. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was some crazy thing like that. And um, like the, these things don't happen in in nature, mm -hmm. in in a natural economy, this is not what what happens. Um, this only happens in, in a manipulated economy where uh, mm -hmm. somebody's on drugs, uh, because really, like we use it, we use that analogy a lot, but it, it, it's very, very apt. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you see these things like when people are hyped up on on meth or or heroin or whatever it is, they don't they don't act like humans, and these this economy is not acting like it's trying to preserve resources. Everyone is wasteful. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's what, that's what inflation encourages. It encourages immediate spending in order to save yourself. Um, that's, that's what's happening. And, um, it's, ha it's, it's, it's glorious and it's terrifyingly sad at the same time, because you know that the people who are guarded against it will do fine. And the people that are not, you can only say so much to them. Uh, mm -hmm. and that's, that's it. I mean, it's, it feels like being a prophet of doom it's it's a hard it's a horrible feeling and it's a great feeling at the same time it's it's hard to describe if you're not in in this sort of uh world well rafi thanks for joining us we appreciate you uh giving your feedback on uh what's going on in the world you've become quite quite the star on uh youtube lately uh all your videos seem to do uh really outperform lately thank you for uh, giving us some of your time we really appreciate it thanks for giving me your time as well